Okay, I got um, another part to my What is Gravity series. Um, this is a um, unauthorized TED Talk. Um, if the TED people knew I was doing this, they would have a fit. So at any rate, um, the uh, mystery of gravity continues. Now, there's, I notice there's a lot of uh, YouTube channels that, you know, sort of uh, dismiss gravity as being, uh, you know, a myth that is not doesn't exist. There's no such thing as gravity. And um, <clears throat> unfortunately, a lot of those websites are just making these assertions. They're not offering much alternative um, modeling or proofs, except for uh, one of the exceptions is, of course, the um, Electric Universe people over at Thunderbolts Project. And um, they uh, have an excellent um, idea about gravity being um, electronic. So um, I'm going to give you what I think is kind of like an illustration of how that might work according to them. Let's say um, right, we got these two I'm drawing these two they're supposed to be massive bodies and so the other you know one of the other things that ties in here is there's really no uh, such thing as mass in some of these um, videos um, they make too much of a simulated uh, at one point or the other at one point eventually there is some simulation to the to the universe it's simulated it's um, energy arranged informationally um, there's a lot of information involved but the simulation does it, it, see it but what people do with simulation is they, they sort of think that, that therefore it's not real, but that's not that's not the way it works. Um, as far as we're concerned, it's real. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you say it's not real. If, it, if it's real, if you feel pain, you actually feel pain. You're not like, it's not illusory. Um, I mean, there's a, there's a, a self-identifying um, being that... Uh, is experiencing these things the qualia in the, in the consciousness studies in other words you're actually aware that you're experiencing some kind of reality and so just to try to dismiss it as a simulation isn't very helpful because um, you still got to deal with the you know you still got to deal with the reality of the you know the depth of the um, of the simulation is it really affects us in, in, a, in a way that um, um, we can't escape. Um, let me turn this around. <laughs> it looks better going now. Um, it really affects us in a way we can't escape. So if you end up in hell, it doesn't matter whether it's simulated or not, it's not going to be a pleasant experience. And if you end up with eternal life, well, whether it's simulated or not, that's going to be a, a pleasant experience. So, um, you know, the, calling it a simulation doesn't really change anything at all. I, I do believe it's simulated at one point. But at any rate, here, let me get back to my little illustration of um, what happens in the case of electric, um, the, uh, the electric gravitational model. So, let me see, what would happen is the um, any kind of any kind of massive body that's made out of atoms and of course now they're going to argue about whether atoms exist or what the <clears throat> and we could talk about that too but okay so here's the deal what happens uh, um, <clears throat> if those two bodies first came together with uh, um, the positives near each other, uh, they would push away 
either one, <coughs> either one or the other will push away, and you get the the negative and positive um, combination. You know, you notice I notice this one when I um, at the lab if I have a handful of um, um, stir bar magnets, um, if you throw them down, the chances are they're going to clump together. The the positive and positive and negative and negative um, are very unstable and the stable position is, is this you know um, negative to positive arrangement and so it reaches the stability so anytime um, anytime like two objects that are made out of um, a positive and negative electric configuration like electrons and protons um, anytime they come in near one another if they originally had their positive and negatives <coughs> evenly distributed <coughs> like that they'll quickly rearranged to to this sort of thing now one of the one of my questions is this happens very 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 rapidly and uh, i would think almost think that if you could spin something fast enough that you might be able to get ahead of the of the positive and negative um, separation and actually experience a little bit of uh, anti-gravity and so anti-gravity <clears throat> anti is really if you can get your positive and positive together or your negative and negative together, and yet you have an anti-gravity scenario. <clears throat> so I'm trying to think that, I mean, that's the only way I can think that that would work with the, the electronic universe um, uh, model of um, electric gravity is that um, those... Uh, charges um, move very rapidly um, and I suppose um, more of them move the closer you get and so that's you know, the mystery of gravity solved really I mean you, I, I don't know what um, would present a problem um, from anybody's point of view with that um, um, so gravity is not a third or fourth force, and um, and we already know, for instance, the um, nuclear weak, nuclear strong, and electromagnetism um, have this uh, unity at a certain uh, energy level, and 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 so. Um, you don't have to worry about gravity um, being a force that has to be unified with the others because it it actually isn't any. It's exactly the same as electro um, or electromagnetism. It's, it's it's the same. It's the same force uh, that um, everything is already um, made out of. It's just. Um, this event takes place when these massive bodies come near each other, um, and I think that I think that the, the reason that um, I find this satisfactory, I, you know, I questioned it and questioned it and I questioned it, and um, the more that um, I look at it, the more it seems to me that you can't argue against it that it's actually um, a pretty strong uh, m model of, of um, an idea about how, how this works. So um, now we have to now we have to bring in questions of um, things like relativity and, and, and space time and, and so forth. Now um, a lot of these alternative electric universe type um, Websites and so um, and YouTube channels and where um, 
they also dismiss those sorts of things. Um, uh, gravitational lensing and, and um, this warping of space time and, and the idea that space and time um, are intermingled. Um, and they're seeking also just straightforward uh, electrical um, forces to, to, uh, to facilitate those uh, relationships. And, and I, I th I'm not one of these, you know, there's a lot of anti-Einstein people out there. And um, I would agree maybe that the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics is this conspiracy, <laughs> okay? Um, because that's the idea that there's there's uh, uh, there's something acting on um, the um, electromagnetic environment that itself doesn't exist. <laughs> so in other words, there's something that doesn't exist, but it's actually acting on, and they call it probability wave. But in other words, it doesn't have any kind of ontological reality, and that's very, very, very objectionable. That the, you know, and that's one of the things Einstein objected to. Um, um, and I think that I think that Einstein's ideas about um, about space time um, are useful way of um, constructing um, relationships between um, you know massive um, massive bodies so um, what would happen so because I, I still want to try to get even with the electric even with electric gravity if you want to call it that um, I think there's still some uh, usefulness in Einstein's way of looking at um, mass and energy. Okay, so now what happens is see nothing really has intrinsic mass or in, or intrinsic gravity. There's not like um, you know everything has gravity. No, that's not that's not the case anymore. Um, so here's one of my questions about um, for the electronic universe, the Thunderbolts project. Here's one of my questions for those guys. What happens in the case of plasmas? See, plasmas would have no gravity um, unless you had, you know, a um, ionic plasma and an electron plasma um, coming into. Uh, relationship with one another and, and distance wise you know, so. and then all of a sudden that what we call gravity would would, would start to manifest itself um, so I don't know if that's true when you do an experiment like let's say you had a cloud of plasma halfway between the earth and the moon um, it would just it would just um, stay where it is. It wouldn't have any particular reason to go one direction or the other. Of course, I guess you could do that with any any anybody. If it was halfway in between, it's going to do that same thing. I'm trying to figure out how to get it at a certain place. Okay, I guess what what you do is you'd have a plasma near something like the earth that's almost equally positive and negative and that's probably not right either see but let's suppose it was um, you know equally positive and negative and then you had this ionic plasma it's all positives now what would happen to me that looks like an, a sort of an anti-gravity scenario um, it's it's half repulsion and half attraction. So that's all you need to do if you could if you could um, 
according to the you know according to that electronic gravity model um, if you could have a plasma it, it, any kind of plasma would um, would possess sort of what you know we would think of as anti-gravity in other words there there would be no reason to um, to have to for instance in, in those um, plasma um, if fission experiments um, that they do in, in, in Princeton for, uh, for instance um, they shouldn't need all that magnetic force to keep the plasma away it, it should just automatically um, avoid hitting the walls of the <laughs> of the container um, and I don't think that's what happens but anyway back to Einstein so here's kind of what Einstein's um, space-time and, and so as you get as you get closer um, denser as you get denser mass and you, you get the the time slowing down there's less time there um, and I think that any kind of simulation sooner or later you're going to have to have this sort of quantized information you have you have, you have to quantize information and and um, and it just might be that um, even with an electric you know electric universe um, theory of gravity you're going to have um, a quantized gravity because you're dealing with um, single charges uh, adding up electrons is, uh, has uh, integer charge if you got two electrons you got twice the charge of one that's <laughs> and, and same with them um, uh, protons or, or you know anything that's got a positive charge and there's your quant there's your quantize uh, you know Planck um, H bar or whatever you know you got there so um, and so the reason that, that, that that's important, I think, is because um, it says at one point or another, as you're trying to decipher the nature of reality, you're necessarily going to um, have a an information, a quantized information content that seems an awful lot like. Um, what we'd call simulation, which is fine, you know. This is a, this a, I don't know. To me, the the word sim, simulation doesn't really make anything difficult for for people that believe in reality. It just um, it's just built up of information. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You're going to feel pain. You're going to feel pleasure. You're going to you're going to um, realize sort of um, an independent existence as a human being. Uh, you're individuated. And by the way, that's another thing that bugs me. You know, there's a lot of these um, guys that come off like they're anti New World Order and are actually promoting New World Order ideology. Because a, a big part of New World Order ideology is this is this idea that um, that we're all one. And, you know, people like David Icke promotes this idea. It's like a Buddhistic denial of individuation. And I think that, you know, uh, we were supposed to. It's intended, our individuation is intended to God one, you know, um, people to experience reality as individuals. Um, and that's the way it's intended and that's the way it's supposed to be. And just denying it's not going to help anybody. But now back to this uh, simulated reality. So... Um, at one point or the other, uh, this idea that everything's energy, okay, that's fine. That's sort of, you know, what the Bible says, um, um, you know, that everything is, consists of light, which is, which is, you know, the full spectrum is the spectrum of energy. Um, my, I, my idea is that if you, if you can get light, so let's suppose you have, and by the way, this is one of the things that a lot of the 
a lot of the um, uh, anti standard model people you know complain about is one of the other things they're saying is that um, uh, you know, electrons aren't like these clouds I certainly don't think there's a probability cloud to anything but um, an electron vibrating and they say everything's vibration good well, everything's vibration okay so you have to have an integer vibration where it comes around and makes a complete um, number of um, cr crests and troughs but I'm suggesting if this energy that's a real that's a super low energy um, electron there if you want to call it that um, and uh, one of the things I, I'd like to recommend I should I wish I um, made proper videos I, I would have had this you know on the screen um, um, watching these water droplets vibrate um, they have these standing wave patterns that, that are very interesting and very um, uh, it's something that's vibrating in a standing wave and so it takes on what seems to be uh, a solid property like uh, the water um, stands in the you know these particular um, arrangements uh, um, with the vibration now my my idea is this okay let's suppose you go at real high energy now right there I mean I maybe got like about 10 or 12 um, crests but you know I'm, I'm saying you know there's trillions of them in this little tiny and what happens is the inner ones are going to eventually start intersecting and they could even um, 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 add to um, their the amount of um, energy that's, that's going on there they're, they're um, uh, reinforcing themselves because in the in the center there if you get high enough energy they'll be intersecting themselves and and um, multiplying uh, like a laser um, my idea is this is this is where um, this is where this uh, uh, mass comes from that the, the uh, vibration to that degree <clears throat> is going to cause this um, overlapping of the wave um, and we know this kind of thing happens because of the path of, of least time that light will take um, for instance when it's passing through um, warm air and cold air um, um, it's it's as if the um, wave is being bent it's getting dragged almost in a sense it's getting dragged into um, in, into a bent position um, because of the um, top is traveling faster than the, than the, than the bottom um, so this is my idea so you got these uh, now this is from a side view and keep in mind now that I'm doing this in in um, two dimensions actually is taking place in four dimensions because um, so that's like a side view of course what would really be is would be a section if you cut it, cut it in, in, in half, and then cut it in half again, and cut it like a quarter of it from the side. And that high of energy is is going to um, make the electron um, exist um, in the sort of what they call the quantum background so um, I think it's actually extra spatial dimensions I, 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 I think that our universe what we experience as the universe is just um, transformed down from an n-dimensional reality that pre-existed where God is and he's provided um, what we experience the present only time 
uh, so that we can't resolve into the infinite. And because it's present only time, we will finite beings can live there. Now there's going to be a rearrangement according to the according to the Bible. It'll be a rearrangement of of the physics of the universe, where um, we will have the past, present, and future simultane simultaneously, um, and yet somehow we're still going to have um, a individuation and um, what seems to be um, finite qualities and in, in, in not not um, spatially finite, but not um, not time-wise finite, be it eternal in time. So uh, these um, reinforced um, electron waves go down, and they and and they are existing in this um, extra-dimensional space mostly. And I, and I think that's what also explains things like um, uh, non-locality and entanglement and so forth. Now, I don't know what the electric universe people do with things like entanglement and non-locality. Um, I know one of the things they, they try to do is just um, uh, come up with this idea that um, electrum magnetic forces um, travel almost instantaneously and the reason they got to do that is because you you um, in order for um, for instance the planets to know where the sun's going to be in order to um, uh, keep up with the sun as the sun is, is going um, moving through around the um, galaxy uh, the planets sort of have to keep up with it and um, you need what's much closer to an instantaneous um, uh, force between um, the Sun and, and, and the planets now you know this is a, this is the whole part of the reason to, you know to invoke dark matter, but maybe what's going on is you have you have the sun traveling, and by the way, I understand all these everything's traveling in sort of um, spiral patterns. I understand this is not like the planets are going around on a plane around the sun. They only look like a plane if you view sort of the top view of the sun and the planets coming at you, but they, you would have to be traveling away at the same speed that they're coming towards you. Otherwise, you would notice that they're, they're getting larger and larger. Um, um, so that's, you know, indication they're spiraling around. Okay, so I understand the planets are spiraling around. And, oh, by the way, the one, one of the channels I was looking at, they had um, an explanation for the idea that the Earth is really not swinging on its axis um, for the seasons, but rather um, sometimes it's above the sun and sometimes it's below the sun, you know, as it's spiraling around, which I thought is a pretty interesting um, idea. But um, <clears throat> this is um, what... Uh, could happen, these uh, electronic forces between the sun and the planets um, are not going to drag that far behind. They're almost going to be perpendicular. Um, and those um, um, are all part, it's all like one big unit. You know, that's the thing, the, the, the solar system kind of acts like a unit, like the galaxy does. And so, it's this whole thing here is um, not just forget about gravity. Okay, it's not okay, it's not gravity is being pulled along electronically. You know, so um, you know electromagnetically, it's the the the, the Earth is being pulled along, uh, and the Sun is being and the word pull is not necessarily the right word either because. I think the same. Another thing that happens 
with what we consider massive objects and um, the space in between them. I'll do this thing again here and we'll have our our um, two massive bodies in the there's a little bit of a imbalance between the positives and negatives because um, the uh, you know as they as they approach one another like I said at the beginning of this video approach one another the automatically um, the the electronic uh, charges automatically arrange himself into the stability okay but what takes place in the space between them that would cause them you know would cause th th these things to um, what <laughs> you know it's normally called attraction is there's less in this space between them there's less something okay there's less quantum foam there's less zero point energy or something but so there's more of it to the outside it's very similar to the principle of um, of uh, water um, pressure when um, for instance a ship comes up along the side of a of a dock um, it has a tendency to you know the water goes f flowing out and pulls the, the ship gets pushed up against the dock um, because there's a lot more pressure um, outside than there is in between those in, in between those two uh, massive bodies and in, in this case it's you know maybe two planets or a planet and a moon um, as opposed to a ship and a dock but the same kind of principle only in, in, instead of displacing water you're displacing this um, quantum uh, background uh, energy um, and so it's almost like you know I want to go back to this idea of the um, analogy between reality and a video game because if you're living let's say you're a character in a video game you're living in the pixel world you know everything's made out of pixels and a really intelligent you know let's say there's really intelligent characters that can do they can figure out some algorithms between the way the pixels always pixels always follow certain algorithms um, <clears throat> but there's no way for the video game characters to intuit what's constructing everything else um, to make up a, a video screen you have all the computer in the background is wired to it um, that you wouldn't be able to intuit not necessarily although I think you can and I think that's why people um, uh, people can believe in God you know is, is that is they figure, hey, wait a minute. This what we what we experience as the universe um, cannot explain its own origins, and therefore something like a, something like a god with um, a system of manipulating information um, makes uh, all the sense in the world. And so um, <clears throat> this is what we have. We we have this sort of a. a um, in a sense, a computer simulation. Everything's made out of, like on a computer screen, everything's made out of pixels. Well, here everything's made out of the energy. It comes in these, you know, positive and negatives, and um, and it's just a matter of, of how it's um, how it's arranged. To you get all the all your you know characteristics of the periodic table and everything else that's involved in in um, constructing uh, a three-dimensional reality, uh, virtual reality, <laughs> you know, I'll call it that because compared to God, it's more, it's kind of like a virtual, but it's, but it's so real that um, um, you're not going to escape by, by renaming it a simulation or, or, or virtual or anything like that. It's not going to escape, can't escape the reality of it. <laughs> so everything's made out of this energy and the energy is configured in certain ways it's um, it's uh, 
got a greater density outside of where we experience the universe. And, and density. Okay, and, uh, and I'm just going to sort of make it like a, I'll make it like a, a square. There's, there's our universe, and here's the n dense and n dimensional. So it's n dense density and dimension. Okay, and here we are with 3D and our um, <coughs> our density uh, fluctuates, um, and because we have this sort of a present only. See, there's one there's one 3D. Uh, history frame, and then there's going to be another one, and another one, and these represent present moments. And I understand, um, I understand, you know, this whole bit about relativity. You know, I'm, I'm just discounting that for now, just to for simplify the. Um, and uh, the see this. This n-dimensional background um, can, if you have a particle, say electron, it's half, I mean, portion of it, like an iceberg, a portion of it exists in our dimension. I'll draw a couple in here. And then, and then it's connected in that n-dimensional reality. Those, they look like two electrons. Uh, they're they're connected in in the n-dimensional reality. We're only experiencing uh, the part of them that um, project in, into our three-dimensional environment, and that explains an awful lot to me. And so um, the whole idea is this: you know, understanding, you know, trying to understand the nature of reality, and, and you know, that's the whole the whole business of science. And I call it, you know, creation studies. Or, um, science to me is sort of trying to figure out how God did it, <laughs> you know. Um, <clears throat> but it's it, it it doesn't you know it doesn't. Here's one of the here's one of the things that's evil about the way science is presented to us. It's like, okay, we know for instance well the sky looks blue because it's um, uh, reflecting um, from the oxygen atoms, um, and, and therefore that means it's not God. I mean what. The <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, what? Where, where do oxygen atoms come from? Where is the property that they would they would um, um, reflect blue light? No, and, and the whole you know the whole thing. That's why there's no there's no such thing as God of the gaps. You got to have the God of the entire thing. See, it's the God of the entire thing. It's not like oh well, you know, um, the, the so-called a natural explanation for something. Because nature it requires an explanation for its existence, and nature can't. Well, nature wouldn't ex um, exist eternally. For one thing, you have um, we experience n no um, uh, infinite energy densities. Um, this night sky is not lit up like the sun. So this this particular configuration um, have have a chronological beginning, but it couldn't have a, a, a chronological beginning if there wasn't something pre-existing in the first place. And, and this is the, you know, the infinite eternal God. Um, and once you, once you can understand that, I mean, you, you know, then you, you have the other questions about things like um, humanity and sin and, and Forgiveness and um, uh, redemption, and the way God decided it had to be done. You know, God makes those calls, not up to us to decide um, how we think He should have um, created the universe or, or how He should have redeemed, um, you know, fallen humanity. That's His His prerogative, and it's up to us uh, as we go through life to. Um, understand, uh, be open to God's prerogatives, and, and um, that's the key to the beginning of wisdom.
is the fear of, of the Lord, meaning um, understanding that he, he calls the shots, you know. Kind of like, <laughs> kind of like what's going to happen to Trump now that he's um, um, he's going to meet the real bosses like Henry Kissinger and the CFR and the Trilateral Commission. All of a sudden, now uh, all the talk about what he could do for the people becomes irrelevant. <laughs> you know? And so all our talk, you know, all people's talk about what they think, how, you know, God should forgive, and you know, you don't, you're not a sinner, or you don't have any reason to repent or anything like that. Um, is going to be meaningless in, 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 in the face of God. And so that's uh, my little uh, diatribe on um, understanding the nature of reality as it pertains to gravity and electric, electric universe, uh, thunderbolts, gravity, which I think um, makes an awful lot of sense. I just think it, it, it could be tested with plasmas, um, the, the theory. Um, and so now I'm... I'm not quite sure why um, they need to contain the plasma in, in, in um, these fusion experiments, except for maybe the fact that it's just so hot that it's going to expand, and they got to use magnetism to contain it. Um, <clears throat> but it seems to me there should be uh, some good um, anti-gravity um, uh, scenarios that, that we might be able to come up with experiments to uh, flesh this out and see if it's really you know uh, electric gravity. I think I think it probably is. Even you know even if you got an electron, um, even if you just have one, one electron in the whole planet, um, it's got what's considered mass because that. <laughs> the planet will, you know, will automatically move a a proton, a positively charged um, particle, uh, to match it. Just like that, everything gets matched automatically. It's it's it's, it's so uh, unstable otherwise, in this, and and it's always seeking this stability. And it's that simple. And I think that it's. Um, needs now it just needs um, some kind of um, experimentational uh, displays to you know really say okay this is it but that would be kind of is really interesting you get rid of gravity like that that's going to solve a lot, <laughs> a lot of problems but I, I I still don't think it I don't think that it solves relativity I think that even even you know the electronic um, gravity is going to um, produce the same effects that Einstein um, was um, basing his models on. I, I don't think those effects are going to disappear just because you got a different um, idea about um, um, gravity. Uh, it's um, just uh, uh, you know a different way of looking at it is more accurate, you know. But um, it is not necessarily. It's just like with the okay with the probability. Okay, yes, these these things behave probabilistically, but that doesn't mean um, the way it's interpreted that there's such a thing as a probability wave. That's nonsense. I mean, yes, you can plug it in and use it for your predictions. <clears throat> But there has to be an ontological reality. There has to be an ontological reality. I mean, the. I mean, it's almost like uh, Maxwell's demon with the probability wave. It's the probability demon. Um, if you're not going to ascribe some kind of um, ontol ontology, um, you that's impossible. You, you there's going to be um, a extra dimensional being. In that case, whose um, um, placing those um, those whatever you're investigating in in in, in a probabilistic um, sequence. <laughs> so you know, I mean, that's and actually that's probably the closest. Of, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Max Planck. 
let me I'll see if I can get this quote, this Max Planck quote. Um, because this is really I think he, he summed it up. And to me he's probably I think he's kind of the greatest scientist of all times, more so than um, uh, more so than uh, Einstein or um, uh, Tesla or any of those guys. I think he's probably got the um, had the, the deepest insights. Although Maxwell was pretty interesting, and Faraday. I mean, these are all you know interesting people, um, but. Uh, I kind of favor um, Planck out of all the whole the whole group of <laughs> let me see if I can find this here. Um, okay, no, I don't have it. I thought I saved it. I save everything by <laughs> I save things in my email and tell you I'm so like not a computer person. If I find a quote, I just save it right in my email. Um, but um, I'm not fine. Anyway, he was saying that there's got to be an intel intelligence behind all these um, uh, the way th the way that um, atoms and molecules and the periodic table and everything like that. Uh, this is an intelligence behind that. It's not. It's not chance, and it's not um, uh, anything that. Um, see, you can't just say, "Well, it, it's nature," because nature doesn't account. Our observations of nature doesn't don't account for its own existence, you know, and and certainly. Um, what we're seeing is certainly not um, what we experience in reality is not random processes because random uh, things um, are um, uh, devoid of useful information. Um, it's this useful information that, that, that gives the universe its abilities. Um, everything from um, the periodic table to life. It's useful information. It's arranged intelligently. It's <laughs> and so, I mean, that's um, to me the uh, appropriate way to interpret nature reality. So, anyway, thanks for uh, watching and uh, subscribing. Uh, we'll get back probably into some political diatribes uh, sooner or later. Uh, but um, I have to be inspired, right? So I was inspired. It's been a while since I did an, an unauthorized TED Talk, so I hope you enjoyed it.